we responded to Edgewater with what's called a strike team. East Rutherford Fire Chief Justin LaHulia rushed to help knock down the flames ravaging Avalon Bay in Edgewater, watched fire devour its lightweight wooden beams like kindling. Firefighters raced to evacuate tenants before the roof collapsed. It's not the best call to get because you know you have less time uh, and, in, and in these residential cases you have a lot of civilians to protect, uh, but it, it, you know, it, it's concerning when something happens at a building like that. It's toothpick construction. It's a danger to the people who live there and it's a danger to the fire service, the guys that have to go in and bring those people out. Charles Augenboff's past president of New Jersey's Deputy Fire Chief Association. He says composite lightweight wood structures often contain truss roof designs and open spaces that can serve as fire conduits, particularly along the attic. The fire just ran right through the cockloft, uh, open, open chases. And it's lucky that all the people got out. Augenbach says lightweight wood construction is popular because it's strong and cheaper to build in an economy desperate for affordable housing. But, he says, without fire stops to help contain the blaze, flames move rapidly. At this Houston complex, still under construction, one worker trapped on a ledge jumped to safety just in time. I'm thinking of the other fires in the state of New Jersey and throughout the country, and that type of toothpick construction that puts a lot of people who live there because of the economy involved, the economics involved, that they have to live in those buildings, uh, their life's at risk, and that, that's wrong. Fire officials say the Edgewater complex met all code requirements, and Avalon's chief construction officer said it used wood frame construction, a standard, common, and safe construction method for multifamily housing used throughout the United States. But field tests show lightweight wood construction in a truss roof, for example, collapses in just five minutes, while standard so-called legacy construction can withstand flames for more than 20 minutes before a so-called flashover. Which is the point where everything ignites and the gas is actually all heat up and you have a large fireball. We have a third the time to get in there, make, make progress and slow down the fire spread before we have to think about getting our men out. New Jersey issued more than 82,000 new building permits for multifamily units between 2004 and 2013, but it's impossible to state how many involved lightweight wood construction. The Edgewater fires now fueling a new push for reform involving enhanced mandatory sprinklers. That once a fire reaches the peak into the actual unprotected sprinkler area, that it is spreading extremely quickly much faster than we've seen in years past. Assemblyman John Wisniewski heads the state's Fire Safety Commission and says the Edgewater fire marks a turning point. And I think we're at one of those points. We need to examine the codes we have, the laws we have, whether we need to require more robust suppression, uh, whether we need to examine the uh, permissiveness of using lightweight construction. Uh, is there a different way of doing this? Is there a better way of doing it? Many firefighters say that even when large lightweight wood buildings are completely up to code, they still dread having to respond to fires there. They say it's time to hold hearings on this issue before the next alarm sounds. In Bloomfield, I'm Brenda Flanagan, NJTV News.